Hello everyone, welcome back to the Plunder Den. In this week's episode, we're going to do a paint tutorial of that Tudor style building that we built in our last episode. So in this tutorial, uh, we're gonna cover how to paint stone, uh, do some weathering of our building, and an overall paint scheme that I've never actually used on a, on a Tudor style building before. Usually I'm using the more in the brown family, uh, but uh, this time I added greens and all sorts of other, other colors, and I'm really happy uh, how it turned out. So I'm really excited to share it with you guys. So here's the finished product. Let's take a look at it. This is what we're going to be painting uh, in this uh, video. Now, if you're interested in the construction of this building, uh, just go to the previous video uh, and uh, you'll see the crafting of this building. Uh, but in this video, we're going to cover how to paint it. So this is the finished product, just giving you guys an overall view of it. All right, so before we get down to the table, uh, if you like what we're doing in the Plunder Den, make sure you smash that like button uh, and consider subscribing to the Plunder Den and get first-hand information of when I post my new videos. Uh, so let's get down to the table and let's get painting. Okay, this is uh, how I usually start with all my terrain pieces, is uh, this Pure Black uh, by Folk Art. It's a multi-surface craft paint. Uh, and this is the same brush I pretty well use on all my uh, ship builds and, uh, and terrain. So just going to cover the entire piece in black. Now in the, uh, the uh, tutorial where we actually did the construction of it, uh, I paint, painted around the windows, which comes in handy because we've put that parchment paper in those windows. And now that we're going to paint the whole thing, um, we don't have to go around uh, those windows right now. Uh, we've already painted it black. So so we're just going to move on. We don't need to watch me uh, paint the whole thing black. So again, uh, as you watched some of my previous videos, we're going to go to the real brown. I like to use earth tone colors uh, to, you know, on all my uh, terrain pieces and ship builds. So uh, same thing where you get that uh, big paintbrush that I usually use. I uh, get some piece of paper towel and I'm just kind of dabbing it out so it's not so thick on the brush. Uh, and we're going to dry brush this entire building with this uh, real brown. So it's going to be a little different than previous times. Uh, where I would uh, keep going with different colors, and but we're going to do different sections of the buildings using but those same four colors. So um, so I'm just going to show you a brief uh, what I'm going to do here, just a dry brush on here. Be careful around those windows again uh, with the parchment paper. You don't want to splash paint in there and uh, and get splatters all in your uh, parchment paper. But if you uh, if you uh, brush the uh, flat against the surface, uh, you'll just hit the edges and uh, you won't uh, get into those uh, parchment paper. So we're not going to watch the entire thing. I'm just showing you a little bit of how I do it. I'm not really overly careful at this stage. I just kind of want to lay it in to the entire building, this, this uh, real brown. Just kind of get it from a black state to kind of a, a really dark brown look to it. So I'm just showing you that I'm, I'm planning on doing the uh, entire uh, building in that color. Let's take a brief look at uh, what it looks like. So you can see it's got a bit of a brown tone to the whole thing. Just spin it around here so you guys can see it. So that's kind of what you should look like when you're you're done. So it's a kind of a consistent spread over the entire uh, entire piece. Just telling you to be careful with that. Uh, we're going to move to the uh, uh, bark brown. And I was just pointing out uh, the areas I plan on doing the bark brown. Really just around the windows and such. So these are the three colors that I normally use. Uh, the Pablo uh, orange. Uh, and this is uh, the camel. Uh, they're all folk art, multi-surface paints. Uh, but they're my earth tones on there. I'm just showing you that uh, I'm going to uh, do them in that particular order. Uh, I started with the uh, the bark brown first, 
So that's what I'm showing you here. Uh, I did the same technique as the real brown. Just saving you time on the video, I didn't show you show myself uh, the dry brushing each one. Uh, it's the same technique for, for both. But on this one, I didn't do the roof shingles with the bark brown. So I, it's hard to tell in this uh, image right now. But I only did around the windows, the stones, and I didn't do the rest. So then I moved on to the Pablo, uh, which is, a, is, is kind of an orangey color. Uh, and then I did all the bricks and uh, all the areas uh, around the windows. I'm just showing you that I made splotches where it's extra orange. So this is going to pay dividends when we do the stones. We have a lot of multicolored stones in there. Um, so I picked certain areas just at random in the stones where I hit the orange a little bit brighter. Uh, you can see that I got splotches in there where I've worked in the orange a little bit more. That's going to give you nice sh uh, shades and shadows. See, I put one on the door. Um, so you're kind of uh, getting ready to put your, your different uh, shading in there already and weathering. So really at this early stage. So the uh, Pabble's a nice bright orange, so we can really uh, add some color there. So then I move on to the Camel. Uh, and really, the only areas that I'm going to uh, do the camel with is the stonework on the bottom. So in previous uh, paint tutorials, I would have done the entire piece. Uh, but in this one, I just want to work the stone with that camel color. Uh, and similar to the orange, as you can see here, I'm just making circular motions in certain areas. So... And why I'm doing that is I want the, the stones to look at like multiple colors. When you look at a stone in real life, they're not the same color. They're all variants and differences uh, amongst them. Some are whiter, some are darker, some are, you know, some of them are uh, more beige. So I'm kind of trying to capture that in the stonework uh, and by doing just little splotches. So I know I got some of it off the camera here, but I'm essentially I'm just doing circular motions in different spots wherever there's stone on the bottom here. So you can see I got bright spots that I've uh, put more camel. So I covered the whole, all the stone with a little bit of camel, but now I've gone back and I've, I've emphasized certain parts of it uh, that uh, will really uh, highlight when we start adding more colors in there. So uh, you'll have different plays. So it, it, when I paint this uh, similar to the temple build, I just keep painting. I, I don't uh, stop and let things dry in between. I try to keep going as the paint's still wet. And why I do that is I like the mixing of the colors on the piece itself. Uh, so you're, it's still a little bit damp. This is craft paint. It, it doesn't take, it takes a little bit longer to dry, uh, but your miniature paints will dry pretty quickly. So you gotta move very quickly when we get to those stages. But uh, here you got a little bit of time to mix the colors up. So now we're gonna move into some craft paints. So this is a Desert Yellow by Army Painter. And I'm moving into a dry brush uh, opposed to that big paintbrush I was using. I'm going to go into a little more finer detail. So I'm going to use this dry brush made by Army Painter. I love these uh, brushes uh, by Army Painter. They're, they work fantastic. So I'm just going to, same thing, I'm just going to get a little bit of paint on my brush and then I'm going to use that paper towel to uh, thin it out a little bit so it's not so thick on my brush. I just want to highlight things. Uh, and similar to the previous colors, I'm going to pick patches in that stonework uh, to highlight. So I want some areas to be a little bit more of this desert yellow. So I'll show you in a minute here. I'm just going to pick certain colors in there. And I'll probably show you a little bit longer on this one, but uh, as we move into different colors, I'm not going to show as much as the, of the technique because it's, it's pretty much the same. I'm just uh, making circular motions. As you can see, I'm just making a little bit more yellow there. And, and as same as the other ones, I just moved from one color to the next. So I haven't, uh, like, I don't let anything sit there and dry for a day or anything. I just keep on going. Just keep on mixing those colors. Uh, you get all sorts of interesting uh, interplays with uh, these, uh, all these colors mixed together. It's like you're mixing a canvas, but you're mixing it, uh, you know, on your palette, sorry, but you're mixing it actually right on the piece. And you get all sorts of uh, interesting colors that come out of there. So uh, similar to, uh, again, the other ones, I'm just picking patches and uh, doing the same circular motion. But uh, with this fine uh, army painter brush, you, you get uh, it's a little easier to control 
than that bigger brush I was using. But I was trying to cover larger areas, that's why I was using the bigger brush. So I'm just showing you more. Uh, like I said, I'm going to cover a little bit more of this stage, just so you guys get an idea of, of the technique that I'm using. Um, and then when I move into the other colors, uh, just repeat this uh, step, uh, essentially the way I'm brushing it on. You're going to pick new colors, and we're just going to add uh, the different spots in the stone, and we're going to get all these interesting uh, colors on here. So you can see I've left... Uh, uh, purposely some areas around the windows and around the doorway um, mainly because uh, there would be a lot of weathering and dirt and grime there so I didn't make it as bright around there so uh, when we add washes and, and areas it will already have a dark feel to it so you're already uh, setting your stages up for weathering already uh, even at these early stages uh, of, your, uh, of your stone work so anywhere you want to leave it a little darker, don't highlight that area. Just leave it kind of uh, dark. You got that black undertone on everything. So we're going to a skeleton uh, bone. Uh, that's a lighter, light. it's kind of lighter than desert yellow uh, color uh, from Army Painter again as well. And we're going to add that on to the piece as well. Again, just picking random spots uh, on there, um, onto the, uh, the piece there. But uh, first, make sure you, uh, again, I'm showing you the video, make sure you put that onto the paper towel and, and don't put it on too thick uh, because this is really a light color and uh, it'll highlight real quickly, as you can see here. And I'm tapping it on. But you can see uh, how those, all those different oranges and yellows and we get really interesting colors in our stones here. All right, just what I was talking about down at the bottom of the doors, you see right on the two edges of the bottom, I kind of haven't added too much color in there uh, because I want to keep it dark. Same as above the windows, and uh, I just kind of left it to... So it looks a little more grimy. Again, staging ourselves uh, for uh, the weathering of it. So I'm just going to go around to uh, the stones and hit all these different areas uh, with this uh, skeleton bone color. I really like uh, Army Painter paints. Uh, I just find that they're, I don't know, it's just easy, the system, to step up different colors. So they'll have one color, and then you can go up three or four different uh, shades of that same color. Uh, it just makes it easier to uh, put layers on, on the, especially on the stonework that I'm working on right now. So a lot of efforts are being put onto this uh, <laughs> bottom. Okay, so now we're going to go to this necrotic flesh. It's kind of a green uh, beige color. I just really want to add some greens to the stones. I figured there'd be some kind of plant life growing on, on the bottom of this building. I'm going to add a little bit more green washes later, uh, but I think we're going to tap the stones all over kind of in certain areas and give it a kind of a green feel to it. So we've added a lot of tans and, and browns and, and oranges. And now we're going to add a little bit of greens in here. Again, just uh, giving those contrasts on, on the stones and um, gives it a more authentic and real look to it uh, with all those multiple different types of colors. So I really wanted to capture that uh, in, in this piece itself. Uh, I've never actually uh, done my stonework uh, like this uh, I wanted to really try it out. I usually add grays and stuff into them, and, and I really want to stay uh, stay away from adding grays to stones. Um, it really, uh, when you look at a stone in real life, it doesn't have a whole lot of grays in it. It's more tans and browns and earth tones and uh, whatever's growing on it. You might find the odd one that's got a little bit of brown in it, um, but I, it's more of an undertone, and that's why I started with those earth tone colors. But I find uh, when you look at stones in real life that uh, they, they, don't, they don't look like that. Um, so I, I really wanted to try this technique uh, of uh, putting just multiple layers of beige and orange and browns and greens and uh, to get this uh, stone look to it. So now we're going to go to this color called Mummy Robes. And it's uh, actually got kind of a brown tinge to it. It's a little pinky. Um, 
but uh, it's a really light color so we're going to highlight the whole thing in this color uh, so it's similar to, uh, you know, just, you're going to use that dry brush. I'm, as you can see, I got lots of colors still in there. I, I don't really clean my brushes in between. Again, I mentioned that I like to uh, have the mixtures of colors, but this one, I'm going to really, uh, work it out into the paper towel there. I, I just want to have a little bit on there and be, instead of doing round, uh, spins, I'm going to do, I'm going to drag the dry brush over it. Um, I'll kind of show you in a minute. I'm just kind of showing you the areas that I'm going to be painting. I'll get it on the camera. See how I'm just doing pass over, just kind of dragging the brush across. You're just touching the all those textures. So all that work we did in the uh, crafting tutorial, of tumbling these uh, insulation foam in the rocks leaves uh, great uh, texture to them. So we're going to capture that highlights by using this very light uh, mummy robe color. Um, and uh, again, adding another layer of different colors to it because it's kind of got a, you know, it's, it's kind of pinky brown color uh, to the uh, to the stone. So another element, uh, and it'll really highlight those raised areas. So as you can see, you can really start to see the textures on it and all those different colors that we've added in there. It's really coming to life now. I'm really happy with uh, the way this uh, particular technique for doing stonework uh, works, and I'll probably go on using it this way in the future, uh, and uh, I'll probably stay away from the grays. Maybe uh, the odd one here and there, I'll add a gray brick in there just to uh, add some contrast, but uh, I think I'm going to stick to these tans and browns. I really liked uh, uh, the end result. So just finishing it up, hitting it up here, just showing you more just a, a dragging technique again, just showing you how I how I did it. This is almost done, nearly done on the bottom here. Just kind of showing you uh, what it looks like when we're all complete. Okay, so now we're going to go to this uh, Necromancer cloak. It's a kind of a gray color. Uh, and we're actually going to do the gray on the wood. <laughs> Um, you know, aged wood or weathered wood uh, has more of a, a gray feel to it. So right now we got a brown feel to it. Uh, and I'm going to leave some brown highlights in there, but I'm going to add this, uh, this gray to it just to give it a, a contrasting or aged look to the wood. Uh, so we don't just have straight up brown uh, wood planks on here. We're going to touch these uh, planks up with a few different colors uh, just to add to it. But I'm going to hit uh, all these uh, boards. So all the areas around the windows, all the popsicle sticks that we put on there. Uh, don't forget the windows up in the top. So just kind of do the whole area with this, uh, just adding a bit of brown. And I'm not putting a ton on. You can see I'm just, just highlighting it. So now we're going to go to this uh, Corax uh, white, and this is a, a Citadel paint. Uh, it's kind of an off-white, uh, and I decided that I'm going to do the walls in a white color. Um, so I'm going to start with a darker uh, white first uh, before I put on the uh, just plain old white. And I'm not actually overly careful about, uh, I'm not too worried about hitting the wooden planks. Uh, because we're going to add more colors on there, the white that actually hits on those planks, it'll add nice highlights. Uh, so we're going to cover uh, it with different colors, but uh, it's kind of like a, a happy uh, <laughs> mess when you kind of hit certain areas. Uh, I'm not you know, staying with, within the lines here. Uh, I'm just kind of loosely painting everything on here. Uh, so I'm going to add this uh, Corax white to all the... Uh, kind of the exposed walls. Uh, there's some up in the windows up up at the top of the roof, and of course there's some all around the uh, second floor of this building. Right now you can all you can see is my hand. <laughs> but anyways, that's what I'm doing. I'm painting those areas. I'll show you in a minute. See like that. And there's it's uh, all completed with those colors on it. As you can see, I didn't wasn't super careful 
but I just I touched a little bit onto the planks, and that's okay. So I'm going to use a matte white now, my army painter, and this is kind of a good pure white. I'm going to use the smaller dry brush by Army Painter, and just so I can get into the smaller areas. And I'm just going to do as I always do in all my pieces, is highlight from the center, uh, kind of lay the paint thick there, and just kind of fade it out as I go further out. And uh, so I'm going to hit all of those areas. Again, uh, I'm not very careful, just kind of slapping it on. Uh, I'm okay if I get a little bit of white on the planks. So I'm going to hit all those areas that I use that uh, Corex on. I'm going to add that uh, brighter white to it. So now that's completed, I'm going to address the, the messes I made. <laughs> but it actually is a good mess. So I'm going to go back to the original craft paint, that uh, real brown. And I'm just going to touch those areas where the white is. And it leaves like a nice highlight on my boards. So it's a lighter undertone under that brown. I'm not going to cover the grays I put on, maybe a few areas, but it gives it kind of a really, as you can see, a real rustic look to the uh, the boards. Okay, now we're going to go to the roof. We're going to start with this green skin by uh, Army Painter. Uh, and we're going to get our little uh, dry brush out. I'll show you in a minute here. This is the larger one. I'm going to go back to the larger one. And I'm just uh, getting some on my brush. And I'm going to do circular motions on this roof. And I'm going to cover the entire, all the shingles with this green skin. Well, I'm pulling up right now. Circular motions. I'm just trying to cover the entire, entire piece. But I don't want to lose the browns and stuff that's underneath. I just want to add a green tone to everything, a hue to everything. So really I'm doing circular motions with this dry brush and adding this green to the entire piece. So we'll watch this for a bit. I just want to let you see how I do it, how I apply it. And we're gonna do lots of different layers on this roof to uh, get the, the green look. Um, that we're looking for kind of an aged green roof uh, it's got some plant life growing on it um, and we're gonna highlight that on here so I'm just showing you we're gonna do the whole roof that way all right so now we're gonna move on to a uh, goblin green and I'm gonna go to uh, kind of a flat brush and we're gonna do the old shingle technique of pulling the the brush upwards that will highlight the edges of the shingles. And we're just adding a little bit of this color onto here. Uh, and we're gonna do all the shingles uh, in, this, in this manner with that uh, goblin green. Here, I'll put some more on the brush and we'll get a little bit darker here. Just a little bit too light, I think, right there. So you can see we're just highlighting it. I'm trying to tip the roof closer. It's a little challenging to film uh, in my small. This building's quite large, so I just want to make sure that uh, you can see it. So I'm just going to go up and use that same technique all the way through. So now I'm going to use one, a color called Scaly Hide. Uh, and it uh, it's, it's kind of like a, a mute, uh, really uh, lighter green. So again, we're going to do the old uh, pulling up technique. It's pulling up the shingles. And you can see we're just leaving highlights on our shingles. So we got that nice brown and black undertone. And we started with a dark green. And now we're kind of moving up to uh, lighter greens. And we're just going to highlight this entire roof. Don't forget the, the caps on top of the, you can't see, but I'm doing the caps on top of the windows too. It's all the same shingles. All right, so now we're going to move on to the last color that I add is Army Green. So this stage is going to take a little bit longer. Um, and we're just going to use this small, fine rectangle brush, my favorite brush for painting ships. <laughs> but what I want to do is I want to add 
a base color to kind of the middle of all the uh, shingles. So I'm not going to do every shingle. I'm just going to kind of randomly pick shingles throughout to add that tone to it. It's going to give it a nice effect of a multicolored green roof. Uh, we've laid all those other greens on there already, but I'm going to add this uh, army green. And it's kind of a, a dollar green, so the roof is not as bright. Some of those other greens are uh, pretty bright. Uh, and this will kind of mute it, uh, make it look more of a, a flat roof. Um, so we're going to add this army green. Another army painter paint. All right, so we're all done that. And now we're going to move on to... Uh, Moving on to this, uh, we're going to add a gunmetal to those little pieces that I added to the top of the chimney. So uh, assume that they're made out of metal. That's what I'm going to put. They're made out of iron or and such. And we're just going to add some uh, metallics to it. So I just want to uh, make a note... Uh, uh, you probably don't notice that the uh, the shingles don't have that army green on it. I actually did this this step for whatever reason before I did the uh, the shingles, but I went back and did the shingles afterwards. So that's why we're, uh, we'll take a look at that in a minute. So we're going to go to this dark stone. And it's kind of uh, got a brownie color to it, but it's a gray. Uh, so it's great. We're going to add some more highlights and some more colors to these uh these planks give it even more weathered look so we've got those uh remnants of the white on there we added that original uh, necromon gray uh, cloak uh and then we're now we're adding um this uh this other uh gray here the stone gray and we're just gonna hit all the wooden planks all right, so now we're going to move into some washes. So now that we've done most of the weathering on the building, we're going to take it an extra level. We're going to add washes. Uh, I love uh, Army Painter washes, and uh, we're going to start with the uh, this green one. Uh, it's a military green, it's called. And I like it better than the, there's another green wash that Army Painter has, but it's a little brighter, and that's better for jungle terrain. Uh, but for this uh, building, I prefer to use uh, this other one. So I'm going to hit areas around the window too. Uh, because on the roof, I'm going to make an effect uh, where the rain falls down on the roof. We're going to have it a weathered look. So it's going to be really dirty and grimy there. Uh, and you can see where water would fall off the roof. And so we're going to highlight that on the roof. So then I've moved into uh, a strong tone. So now that I've added the green to the bottom and around the windows and some of the roof, now I'm going to use a strong tone. And we're going to hit uh, around the edges of uh, everywhere that I think there would be grime in this building. Um, the dirt or whatever would accumulate. I'm going to go ahead and add this uh, strong tone on onto it. Definitely around the chimney. Uh, all those metallics I'm going to cover completely in this color. We're actually going to add a lot of colors to that chimney to make it look uh, like it's been well used and, and uh, really dirty from all the soot coming out of there. Um, so we're going to add a few colors to it. And uh, just showing you all the different areas that I'm going to touch up that uh, strong tone on. So now we're going to move into a, a dark tone. So usually the dark tone I'll go right into uh, where I had the strong tone but uh, put a highlight on there. I can see on the uh, roof I already had those, uh, you can see I've got, I used a strong tone and that green tone to get that uh, weathered look right underneath the windows. I just kind of pulled washes off there. So I'm adding this dark tone to the chimney um, just because that's where I think a lot of soot uh, would be uh, and it would be a really black and dark uh, on the top of the chimney. So I'm going to add a lot of that dark tone. We're also going to go through some of the bricks, uh, especially under where the roof is, uh, and hit some of the corners with this uh, this dark tone. So I'm really going to add some some really contrast on the bottom here. So I'm going to go around the windows, around the doors, underneath the framing, and just hit all those areas with a little bit of that dark tone. So I love this uh, effect paint by Army Painters called Dry Rust. 
and I've used it before in some of my other previous uh, videos. Um, and I'm just going to hit some of the hinges, uh, the doorknob here, and we're going to add some to the metallics on the chimney. I really like uh, this dry rust. It just adds another level of of uh, of you know weathering to to your piece. So I'm just going to hit uh, up here. I know the camera angles are a little wonky. Uh, I'm actually holding <laughs> holding the camera while I'm trying to paint at the same time. I know it's crazy. I got to come up with a better system. But until then, uh, this is uh, how I, uh, you know, as, as long as you guys can see what I'm doing, I think that's the most important thing. So I'm just adding a little rust on there. So I'm just pointing to the windows that I painted these windows uh, to highlight them. Uh, I didn't leave them that brown color. I added that uh, Pablo orange and I mixed it with that real brown and I painted the windows. Uh, and in this video, I didn't show you how to paint that crest as well. I just painted freehanded that onto that square. Um, I just purely looked for crests on, on the internet for different Tudor style buildings and, and picked a design that I think I could paint and I just copied it. So I'm just showing you everything uh, that's completed. I just wanted to point that out to uh, the windows again because I didn't really show it in the video, but I want to explain it again. I, I mixed the real brown and that Pablo orange, and then I went back and, and I highlighted all those window seals. I just wanted them to pop a little bit more. Uh, I did all that work with those, uh, with those uh, matchsticks, and I really wanted to highlight that. And I, again, I'm just showing you the weathering that we added to the roof. So that's just strong tone and that uh, that military green. I'm just showing you those some of the colors. I did go and add a bit of dark tone to a little bit to some of the edges, uh, but not as much. And it really gives that uh, look of uh, stained from rain or weathering. And on the, the chimney, I went as far as to add matte black. So I added all those washes, but then I felt I wasn't getting it dark enough. So even with the dark tone, I, I went back and I hit uh, it was even with black paint some areas. So I made it really, really dark. And then I added more uh, dark tone to the chimney. I just wanted it to be darker, grimier, dirtier. All right, so we're going to take a whirlwind of uh, the port of plunder. So I've added uh, this Tudor style building to the port. And I'm kind of just going to do a run through of the uh, battle map and just kind of show you uh, everything. And we'll, we'll end off at the uh, Tudor style building that we've completed. But I just kind of wanted to give you guys an overview of the entire, uh, entire game board, really. Uh, I usually uh, am probably going to use this uh, Tudor style building for my favorite game, Blood and Plunder. Uh, I do want to use it for Blood and Valor. It's a good European style building. It'll fit right nice with a World War I style game. Um, but uh, like I said, you could use this for Warhammer, Dungeons and Dragons, whatever you need to use it for. Uh, it, uh, it would fit into a lot of different categories. So here's the Port of Plunder. Uh, these are some of the other buildings I've built. You can see there are a lot of darker tones on there. Uh, and then there's our Tudor style building. We've uh, it's uh, completed. I just kind of wanted to show you uh, it inside the port. So let's just get around to the other side. So guys, if you like this video, make sure you uh, smash that like button uh, and uh, consider subscribing to the Plunder Den uh, and uh, get firsthand information of when I when I complete these projects. I'm just going to keep going here and uh, show you a little bit more of the, of the town. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Thank you all so much for uh, watching. And I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video.